When, if you remember, I asked you once a question, what's more dangerous? To be connected to a secular person does not keep anything. I'm not religious. I'm not interested to hear about religion. You know who you're dealing with. His spiritual level is zero. Or someone that is 50-50. What they call today modern orthodox. He keeps some mitzvot. And that's it. There is no way to move him left or right, up and down. He's stuck in his level for already 20 years. And he doesn't have any problems going to movies, to the theater with his yamaka, going to baseball game of Goim, hearing them cursing, smoking grass next to his children, women that are not modest in the stadium, all the dirty language of the fans. He has no problem. Why? <coughs> That's the modern side. Shabbos, you see him in a shul holding sidur. That's the orthodox side. Mm -hmm. Modern orthodox, modern orthodox, modern orthodox. Every minute is something else. Okay. So the question is, who is more dangerous to you? A modern friend like this? Or someone that is totally a mush? Nothing is religious about him. I'll give you another question. One time a person asked me, Rabbi, my kids are in public school right now. Where we live, there is no orthodox yeshiva. There is only conservative Solomon Shechter yeshiva. Conservative. What's better, to move my children to the conservative yeshiva or to just keep them in a public school? And a conservative yeshiva, they mention that there is a day Shabbat, they mention candle lighting, they talk about Moshe Rabbeinu, the exodus of Egypt, what God said to Moshe, how the Jews came to Israel, they may teach about Bet HaMikdash, they teach some Jewish holidays, what Hanukkah is, they teach about Purim, in a public school they don't teach anything, you don't know anything about religion. So what's, what's the obligation of a parent? Obviously he has to move to a place where there's kosher yeshivot, but for the time being, until he find a place, until he will move, until, we're talking few months. Now he needs to make a decision, beginning of a year, to register his kid in a public school or in a conservative place. The right answer is to none of them, to keep the kids in the house. Absolutely, without a doubt. Until you find a kosher yeshiva. Better they'll be home. Better uneducated, decent, righteous people than educated monster heretics. Like all the university speakers that destroys the world, all these heretics. Better. In the old generation, a lot of uh, Moroccan women and Iraqis and Persians with the scarf on their head. They came from Iraq, from Iran, from Syria, from Lebanon, from Egypt, from Morocco, from Libya. They didn't know how to read and how to write. They didn't know. They didn't go to, women didn't go to school. But they knew how to be in love with Hashem every second of their life and how to be fully modest and how to be a real supporter of the house, taking care of the husband, of the children, pushing them to Torah, to yeshivot. They didn't know how to read. Everything by them was from what they hear in the synagogue, from the rabbi. That's how they knew, whatever they knew. So what, uh, what's better, an educated Jewish doctor that spit at Hashem every minute of her life in her lifestyle, in the way she dressed, the way she talks, in her heresy, in a contaminated mind. She knows how to read, she knows how to write, she's a professor, but she's 100% wicked. Betray God every second of her life. 
or Moroccan woman that doesn't know how to read or how to write, old fashioned, cover, modest, loyal to her husband, live very simple, down to earth. Every other word, thank you, God, we love you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. With great, beautiful behavior. What's better? Depend who you ask. You ask the modern Orthodox, they'll tell you better the professor. You ask the real Orthodox, there's no question. What are you even asking? We don't care what we care. We care what Hashem cares. So the question now, obviously if I will tell the guy, keep them at home, he wouldn't exactly listen to me. So what would be the answer now? Better to keep them in a public school or to move them to, an or, to a conservative yeshiva? What do you think? House is obviously the priority, but if he refuse to keep them in a the house, then what? Better that they learn some Jewish things, at least they know what it is. They hear about Shabbat, they hear about Moshe and Aaron, they hear about Paro. They read maybe Parashat Shavua, so they get some idea what happened in the Torah. Or better they be with Tony and Vinny and Christopher and Bruce Lee. All of them together in a class. What's better? The answer is better they'll be in a public school than they'll be in a conservative yeshiva. Now the question is why? If someone owe you $100 and he refused to pay, he said take 50 or you get nothing, what would you say? Give me 50. Better to take something. Then nothing. But there is a better way. Say to him, either you pay me what you owe me, or don't pay at all. That's a problem between you and Hashem, not mine. Whatever is mine must come to me, with or without you. Whatever is not mine must leave my pocket, with or without you. Now you have the choice now to bring a terrible punishment on yourself, or not. But I'll get what I deserve, with or without you. That's Baal Emunah. Someone who doesn't have Emunah, he doesn't believe in Hashem, he will take 50. Better I get 50 than, 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 than not to get anything. But someone that has Emunah, no, I didn't steal this money. I gave it to you. Now you're blackmailing me? Take 50 or you get nothing? Don't do me any favor. Finished. It's between you and Hashem now. If Hashem thinks I deserve it to get it, he must give it back to me. Because if, I, if I'm not guilty of anything, why would I lose money? To lose money, it's a punishment. Punishment comes to people that are guilty. If I'm not guilty, there's no reason for me to lose money. So I'm not worried. If I'm guilty, how is it going to help me to take 50? Hashem just decreed that I'm going to lose 100. And he sent me that crook that was looking to steal money. So if I'm still guilty by taking 50 from him, I still have to lose that 50, because Hashem decreed that I'm going to lose the 100. <laughs> so I have to lose the 50. Why would I give him a free, get out of jail, pass? Let him pay for what he have done. Alitenu la rasha veyamot, Chazal say. Shove it up, down his throat. Why? That he should eat it faster, meaning... You multiply sin. Why? Because it's Rasha. And on Rasha, you don't have an obligation to rebuke or to save him. You don't have. The obligation, as I explained yesterday in a lecture that I gave yesterday in Queens, is only to Amitcha. Amitcha means your colleague, the one who believes in the same God like you, in the same Torah, and follow the same religion. Now when he's about to do something wrong, you have to do everything you can to help him not to. Or to save him from the sin. But if it's someone who disrespects Hashem, and he keeps saying, I'm an atheist, I'm a chiloni, leave me alone, I'm not interested in your stupid religion. Someone like that, you don't save him from anything. The more problems he accumulates, the more he's going to pay for it. He's not, doing, and we're not do, he's not doing us a favor. We don't have to beg him to stop. He only makes his situation worse. 
you can smile for the time being and laugh. But someone who knows that in the end Hashem gives everyone what they deserve, you shouldn't even eat your heart. 